So today we are talking about uh, blockchain, smart contracts, and uh, because it's, it's a hot topic now in the market and uh, in the industry, and uh, how we can uh, write an application backed by Spring Boot and connect it to the blockchain that we wrote. And uh, yeah. Uh, first, uh, I will start with the. Uh, What's the blockchain? I know uh, most of you heard about that, and yeah, of course, maybe some of you invest in cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. Of course, that was that, that's a very famous cryptocurrency out there. And uh, then we are talking about smart contracts. That's the thing that uh, introduced in Ethereum first, and uh, and other uh, blockchain platform uh, focus on that part for the business purposes. And uh, we were talking about uh, Hyperledger Fabric, which is one of those uh, open source projects with uh, a lot of uh, support from IBM and other uh, major companies. And it provides uh, a platform for businesses to create a blockchain uh, and it's modular and you can add your own consensus and other part that you want so uh, uh it's a the major black block open source blockchain platform out there and then we are going to check how we can write our first uh smart contract uh yep. so blockchain is a distributed and immutable ledger so we know this is it uh that we call another name for that is a distributed ledger so the, the, the two uh, features that, that's very important for most of the businesses, it's distributed and immutable. So you can track anything uh, from tangible or intangible goods. C cryptocurrency focus on transactions, and but uh, right now m many companies working on blockchain for, uh, for using it in their system. Since it's immutable, so, you can trust the network, so so no can so uh, no party can tamper with your data, and uh, it's always there. And also, it's uh, distributed, so it's not uh, rely on one parties. For example, uh, Bitcoin, uh, you have a lot of you can uh, participate in the network. You can be a node in there, and then you can mine and uh, participate in calculating the hash codes and other stuff. So um, it's distributed. So we have the ledger in all the nodes. So all the nodes have, have the, a cop copy of the ledger on their site. So uh, they know what's happening there. So they have access to the latest state of the ledger and, what, and everything there from the beginning. So. Uh, despite the cent centralized ledger, uh, yeah, of course, right now we have uh, we, uh, companies that are using distributed databases and uh, we have a backup, but in blockchain, they have the exact uh, copy of the ledger in every node. So, and also it's immutable. What's the immutability, immutability means? That's, uh, we have each block contains of three sections transactions uh, which is the list of transactions that uh, contains in the block and the hash of transaction a digital fingerprint that if you change any uh, uh, any property of the transaction any feature uh, any part of the transaction the hash will be changed and then we have the hash of the previous block so uh, that's that makes it uh, related to the previous one so if you uh, if you change the previous uh, transaction so it will change the hash and the, the chain will be broken so that's why we cannot change uh, in, uh, temper with the blockchain because for that you have to uh, recreate the whole blockchain from the beginning because one change will affect every other uh, part, uh, other chain of the blocks in our ledger. So it's immutable in that way. 
uh, and we have the, the thing is that we have two types of blockchain. After the blockchain introduced with uh, uh, Bitcoin, uh, there was there was a lot of attention on the, the technology that brings trust to your network, and uh, it can work on its own. It's, you don't need uh, uh, you know normally someone should uh, do something. I, I mean, I will get to that point, but we have permissionless. Uh, which is most of them all public, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ripple, which the nodes or the parties and user can participate in the process. But uh, we also have permission, that which is uh, mostly targeted uh, businesses, because uh, based on the nature of the business, maybe they don't need to be public. They don't need everyone to to be able to connect to their network. So. Uh, we have uh, hyperledger is one of them and uh so for the permission list um since we have uh, every node, when another uh, uh another transaction add to the network they have to recreate from the beginning that but that's why the uh, mining the bitcoin is very time consuming and energy consuming processing process because uh, every node should start. Uh, the they have to reach the consensus that uh, this new block and this transaction and which kind one of those transaction in the block they should be added to the next block. So it's very important they start to work on that, and for that they will emul uh, emulate the whole blockchain, and they will start working on checking the hash code and. Uh, solving a very complex hash puzzle and then after that they will propagate the if they if, if, they, if one of the nodes solve the puzzle it will send it to all the nodes and then it's uh, the next block will be added to the blockchain so uh that's why we have in uh, i mean in this case ripple is not a good example because all the tokens generated by bitcoin and ethereum all the nodes they have to uh, start uh, doing the mining and solving those uh, hash codes and hash puzzle to make that uh, transaction add to the block. For the uh, for the permissioned uh, net uh, blockchain, we have a selected trusted nodes. So we have a maybe a manufacturer that uh, provides some goods so it sends it to retailers and uh, it connects to uh, shipment companies so it creates the, the blockchain for uh, its networks so it's not need to people participate in their uh, blockchain so in that case it's more efficient consensus algorithm we will get to that uh, uh, and then you can uh, we can use uh, you have other options for the consensus algorithms, and all the parties can create their own uh, consensus. So, uh, in the permissionless blockchain, when uh, clients uh, they are creating a list of transactions, and that list of transactions will send to nodes, and, and each node starts to uh, create run an algorithm called proof of work. So, it's, this algorithm is that's what I discussed, and uh, uh, so. They will start it from the beginning of the blockchain and they will check that if this transaction or which one of those transactions in the block will match it, match the, the whole blockchain ledger. And then it's a complex cryptographic hash puzzle. So it takes time. And as soon as the puzzle solved, they will send it to the other nodes. And then the other nodes, they will edit their own uh, ledger and then the other one. In the permissionless uh, blockchain, so this proof of uh, work algorithm is very consuming and slow and uh, in global scale, of course, but it's necessary because we have, I mean, we have uh, many nodes with, that we don't know, so they may want to tamper with our data, but uh, with this proof of work algorithm, that's not going to happen. And uh, for most of the businesses, they don't need such a complex, uh, complex algorithm. They want to uh, they want to get the result 
immediately and uh, they know that they are they are in the trusted network and they know the parties so they can use a very simple uh, consensus alg algorithm but uh, permissionless blockchains uh, using uh, they are good for transactions what we know what we see in the cryptocurrency market and voting and there's uh, other use cases for that for the permissioned blockchain um, nodes are trusted as we said and uh, nodes are just not just represent users but the entire organization so an, an organization can uh, connect to a network of blockchain as a company. So, and uh, there's no users uh, involved in that network. And privacy is important for the permission. So for most of the businesses, they don't want to, they, want, they don't want others can see their, their transactions. They are sending, uh, uh, they may have, in case of retailer and manufacturer can uh, offer different prices to different retailers, but they don't want to share it with the market because it will be hurtful for them. And uh, in, the blo in permission blockchain, we have pluggable consensus algorithms. So you can have your own consensus, write it down for your own business and plug it to the blockchain and use it. And since it's not... Uh, so it's, um, it's very efficient at the end and uh, you can make it also you can have smart contract that can do a lot of things and execute a lot of transactions uh, which are uh, in your system so it makes it more uh, efficient so in the permission blockchain uh, we have, in this example we have a manufacturer and a retailer and a Sorry, it's just a, <laughs> this is, should be a shipment code. And uh, a retailer wants to buy a 100 pound of uh, some product and then uh, with $1,000 and then manufacturer will accept it. And then it will send it, uh, and, and then it will send it to a shipment company. So it says that, okay, we have a one, 100 pound uh, goods to be shipped and uh, the price is 100 uh, dollars so they will get to that point that okay so, but retailer and shipment they don't need to know uh, anything about each other and uh, the retailer don't uh, necessarily i mean it's not they don't have to know anything about the uh, contract between the manufacturer and uh, uh, shipment code in the prim and the permissionless blockchain since everything is in the blockchain uh in the one ledger so you cannot have this kind of privacy so that's why uh, permission blockchain uh, they they uh, they created many companies working on this kind of platform for the market so Smart contracts that will be uh, discussed. That is one of the efficient uh, uh, things about uh, uh, permissioned blockchain. Since it's introduced in, uh, we have uh, smart contracts, but it's a very limited version on Bitcoin. But it's well. Uh, firstly, it was introduced in Ethereum, and uh, other cryptocurrencies. They are trying to create their own smart contracts and. It's just, it becomes a very hot uh, feature for uh, cryptocurrencies to have smart contracts in their system. So somebody can use a distributed application. The apps, uh, that's the, what they called, that you can write the apps for Ethereum and other, uh, some parts, some, I don't know which one, but you can, surely you can write the apps for uh, Ethereum. Uh, which you can use the blockchain and then you can write your own code for your transaction. So it's a running code, code that is running on blockchain. And whenever certain condition happen, uh, they are automatic automatically executed. So like uh, if somebody accepts your, uh, your uh, request for buying something, if they are accepted it, so you can easily uh, ship it or you can uh, find them or you can uh, uh, you can you have to pay the price automatically 
So it's the uh, parties, they are, uh, they are agree on some contracts, and then the contract will store in the blockchain, and then it will be executed if those conditions are met. So smart contracts, uh, as we said, the, uh, the parties, uh, it's, it's, it's created between multiple parties, and uh, they will be, they can be anonymous, or they can be, uh, uh, you can query the parties that who are participated in the uh, blockchain and the smart contract, and then at some event it will be triggered and uh, it's self execute and and it will create transaction in the level of blockchains. Uh, so that's uh, how it works, and we have a. <clears throat> First, you are writing uh, uh, the, the smart contracts, and then the both party they have to register to that, and then uh, it will store on the blockchain. And from now on, the the blockchain that the smart contract will be executed. So no third party is needed, which is very important uh, in case of like renting a house, buying a house, and other stuff that will be very useful for those kind of transaction if you can if you can uh, if you could create your uh, digitize your asset and put it in the blockchain so it's autonomous and secured and very accurate and uh, nobody can change the block uh, the smart contract on blockchain if they do it will be a new transaction block in uh in your blockchain that's this uh smart contract tempered or changed and uh, the performance is high because it's at a level of blockchain so it can easily call the blockchains and blockchain transactions and uh uh apis and of course it's trustless since those uh so you don't need trust since they are in the network so uh that will okay, and then it will it's, it's cost effective. So you can do some um, sending uh, like the ownership of a car to someone without paying an extra money to a third parties to write it down for you the contract. So the contract is there. So when you uh, send the ownership to one people, so it happened. It's there in the blockchain. Ah, uh, sorry. So uh, Hyperledger Fabric, which is uh, what we are trying to, I mean, uh, we are going to talk about today, is a widely used private blockchain backed by IBM and some other uh, big companies. And uh, it's the primary, uh, uh, the, uh, it's, it's, it's designed for the enterprises. So to make it more efficient, and make it uh, it's, it's modular, so it's, you can add your own uh, consensus algorithm and uh, other stuff. Uh, so it's a modular um, platform, blockchain platform, and uh, you can define your assets and consensus uh, protocols. You can set permission and which which party can connect to which network and who can join that. So you can. Uh, easily control who can join your network and uh, who can tamper with your data, or who can send transaction, who can see the ledger, all those stuff. You can create permission and access, uh, ac uh, define access for them. And uh, there's two types of nodes in blockchain in the, the hyperledger fabrics: peers and orders. So we will get there at which one do what, and uh, each ledger. Uh, each uh, peer, uh, they have the whole uh, ledger, and which ledger each, each ledger has a uh, current state, which is normally a database like CouchDB for the uh, query purposes, and the log of transaction, which is an immutable file, uh, which is that's the, the log of transaction, which is immutable file. You cannot change that. Uh, if anything changed in that log file. The blockchain will uh, detect that, and uh, Fiber Ledger Fabric uh, will disqualify that 
uh, pure. And uh, you can use uh, that for, uh, you can use chain code for adding assets, updating them, and transferring those uh, assets that you created in the blockchain that you defined in, the, in your Hyperledger fabric. Um, so we have two nodes. That's what uh, that's, uh, we have peer, which is responsible for executing and verifying uh, transaction. And it has a copy of the ledger and the blockchain log and uh, state database, which is uh, for query purposes. Because in most of the businesses, you have a very complex asset and you want to change it. Uh, you want to query based on that, based different uh, based on different uh, fields. So it's very important to have these features. So for that, you have a coach DB alongside each node to for the state database and query purposes. And the order is the part that uh, 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 that we discussed that we have a pluggable consensus modules in in uh, in permissioned uh, blockchain. So in this case, order do these things. It does the ordering and propagating the transaction. If somebody uh, 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 send a transaction to our network, uh, the order will decide that this one will go or not. So you can implement your consensus algorithm in your order, and you can plug it to your fabric, fabric network. So this is the uh, how the, the transaction flows works. So you start proposal uh, transaction. You send a pro uh, transaction proposal, and uh, this will uh, if uh, and it will be uh, it will be uh, processed in the order, and then uh, it will check if it's possible, as if it's endorsed. Uh, it will send a uh, transaction back to the uh, user, and then you can submit it. And then in the ordering service, it will check it again. And then uh, we can send it to pure network. So in there, they commit it, and then they're validated again uh, with their blockchain, with this, uh, what we discussed, that they will start to check that blockchain from the beginning. Oh, so. And when you have an SDK in your application that you want to create an application for Fabric, so you have a client, and then you submit your transaction to your Fabric networks. In this case, we have two organizations, and each organization has their own uh, certificate authorities. Uh, that's one of the pluggable uh, components of Hyperledger Fabric. And then uh, in the peers, we have chain codes, and then we have a uh, order, which is um, uh, it's trying to uh, um, send the ordered transaction from one in the network. So it makes sure that everything is uh, ordered uh, in terms of transaction. And we have channels. Channels is one of the most important uh, part of the uh, Hyperledger fabric, which is we have we can say that for each channel we have a different uh, chain code. So each peer can join different channels. For example, a, a, a manufacturer can create can have uh, can has two uh, two channels. One for this for with the shipment companies and one with retailers. So none of those. Only the peers that who have access to those channels can see the ledger. So for which for each channel we have a ledger and chain codes. That's how they control the privacy uh, for different uh, part of the business. So you can handle uh, this kind of privacy with uh, defining different channels, which different uh, peers can join them. Um, <clears throat> okay, so. This is all uh, uh, we we're talking about the blockchain and uh, other stuff. So, okay, uh, for Hyperledger Fabric, they uh, they uh, introduce a, a they have a very good plugin on uh, VS Code. Uh, 
unfortunately they had to have they should mess up with something so you have to only work with this version 192 and also the node.js should be uh the the version 10.x and uh, you only in that sense you can work with this uh uh, with uh, this plugin, so what it's do it's uh, it helps you to write your block your uh, smart contracts, and it's uh, also creates a uh, fabric environment. So what's the fabric environment? So we have this uh, fabric running, but uh, I'm gonna destroy this one and then. Uh, Okay, we have all the network deleted, so we can create it from the scratch. Okay, mm, and in here we have already a car smart contract, but uh, I will create a new one so we can see that how it's working. So it's you have two one two option default and private. Uh, so we can say that which single uh, network member can work with this one, which um, to be honest, I don't have experience with this one with the plugin. So uh, in here you can set, uh, select your uh, programming language. So you can write Java, JavaScript, type and Go. Uh, of course, Go is very, uh, the, the, the smart contract that we are writing, uh, Go will be much faster for Java. It will create a huge uh, Docker uh, compose the Docker file for that. So uh, it's better to write with Go, but we select with, uh, go with uh, Java. And even here, you can select your asset, and uh, this asset can be anything. Uh, it depends on your uh, use case. So. In here, we can talk about something like uh, certificates, like what we have. Uh, we can have a certificate, of course. And then we can save it somewhere. Uh, sorry. To go. Or contract. Um, to workspace. So what it does, it creates a uh, Gradle-based application with Java, and then uh, it creates a certificate, which is the object of type, data type, and import uh, Hyperledger Fabric contract library. So you can define your asset here. So certificate is your asset. And here you can just you have a simple value, or in this case, in case of car, you have a model, color, owner, whatever you need. You, so you, in here, you can model your <clears throat> asset, what you want to digitize and store it in the blockchain. And you, you want to write a smart contract for that. And it's very good to know that, uh, to, uh, Explain here that we can have multiple smart contract calling each other. So that's that makes sense for a complex use cases that you want to have uh, this kind of uh, possibility that you can 
call a part of the code like sending an invoice and other stuff uh, within your smart contract. So you can write uh, multi-level or multiple uh, certificate uh, smart contracts and call them. So in this case, uh, what's why? Uh, so what we created was this one. So you have a simple certificate, and uh, we have a certificate contract, which is annotated with this contract. And then um, we have a transactions for like creating uh, certificate, uh, checking if it exists, and recertificate, updating certificate, and delete one. Whatever you need, you can add it here. In this case, for example, in the car, we can query the whole database based on the state of the based on the IDs, or you can uh, write a queries because we are using uh, Hyperledger Fabric and uh, CoachDB alongside with that. Also in here, we can have something like that, change, change car owner. So in this case, if somebody you sell your car, so in the blockchain that has your car as an asset, we can change the owner. And yeah, we have this two smart contracts, certificate and car. So this is very easy. It's a simple Java application or JavaScript. And then in here, you can create, you can package your projects. So you can select your uh, smart contracts, right? You can set, okay, your package name is certificate. And then you get, get the uh, add a version to that. So because you may want to update your smart contracts later. So you need the versions. And, and when you are trying to call a smart contract, you have to define the, you have to set that which version do you want to call. So it simply creates a package here. And then we are we need that uh, blockchain environment to uh, to, uh, to install this smart contract. So in here, you can create a uh, new from template. So you have these options, um, organization, one organization, one peer, one channel, or two CAs, uh, two organization, and two peers in one channel. So we go with the first one, and environment will be certificate, whatever you want. And then it starts to create uh, fetch a lot of uh, Docker images. So in here we can see that, uh, let's first see that it's over. So it creates a wallet for each one of the uh, parties in the system. So this, each party in the blockchain network has uh, has to have, I mean, they need a uh, certificate, public private key. That's what we have in wallet. This becomes their wallet. And they using that, they can connect to the network. And they will be authorized if they can do anything with the network. So as normally, you can do it with binary files. Like uh, we have binary like uh, crypto gen. So you can write a crypto gen. So you can write it before the network. So it becomes static. Or in this case, uh, we have CAs. CAs, they are becoming a, a, a certificate issuer for your whole network, from the peers to the user that they want to uh, communicate with your system. So in here, you see that the, the system is trying to create the whole uh, network. If you can see, we have uh, multiple Hyperledger uh, containers. So that's what Hyperledger uh, provides. So you can have multi, you can create your own CAs. You can create your own peer. You can create your own order. So and plug it to the server, to the block, to the uh, blockchain. Then then you can use them. Those so every parties can create their own peers, and they can. Uh, write their own businesses there, and then uh, it will be executed when it's running. 
Uh, it takes some time because uh, it has to create uh, all those uh, containers and Okay. Okay, so our certificate network created, and in here you can install your chain code. And the installation is just uh, some sort of copying in your network, but you have to in instantiate your uh, smart contract here. Uh, for this smart contract, it creates a Docker, uh, it creates a container. So each chain code will become a container alongside your uh, Hyperledger uh, network. So we are waiting for the... Okay, it was instantiated, sorry. So it's here. And then you can see that your network, you have nodes, peers. Uh, in, this, in here, we have a CA for each node that we have, one of the, and in here, we have a gateway that we can connect and see that the function that we have, the transaction that we can call on our smart contract and you can call that each one of them in here and you can test it here and uh, there's another way and if you want to connect another application to this one you need to export this uh, yeah export this the certificate so this one will create a connection file so this connection profile you use it in your application to connect to your uh, blockchain. Right, so. Okay, I wrote, uh, and no, not this one. Okay, this is a blockchain application. So this is a, a pre-existing uh, example. So if I found uh, the certificate and uh, this file, we can see it in here. So this is uh, the definition of our network. So any uh, any uh, any application that they want to uh, connect to our blockchain and call the uh, smart contracts, they have to add this to their application and create the fabric gateway in the application using this one. Uh, that's what we have here. Not here, sorry. All right. So we have a, a Spring Boot application, simple S Spring Boot application. And in here, we have to create the blockchain uh, configuration. So we, add this resource here, and then uh, create our network, uh, our clients, and then we enroll user, and then uh, we connect to our channels, 
and then we can use it. How we can use it? We have uh, a file executor that you can uh, you can create. You can use the client that you just created as a bean, and then the channel, and then you can execute the function, the transaction in your smart contract by invoking it. And here we have a execute transaction, create car. So create car will be executed with this argument and you can connect it to your uh, API. So for this, we have to run it. OK. Something is wrong. Sorry, I think I'm creating a new network. I uh, just messed up with our uh, car one. Also, we can install this one. Um, I think I have to Okay, we have the car installed. Same issue, but let's uh, we can call uh, the transaction here. We can evaluate or submit a transaction. If there's argument, we have to set that. In this case, we don't need it because we are going to call. Sorry, this one. Uh, and it's a ledger. So in here, we just put some data in the, our ledger. So it's there. So it's su successfully submitted. So we can uh, we can write. All cars. Okay, so it's, just, uh, it's not here, so uh, we can package this one. So car. Can upgrade our smart contract in here because optional what function do you call nothing
think it would be uh, useful to see the config file for creating uh, a hyperledger fabric network. So with this file, you can define your nodes, organization with the names, anything you peers, and also capabilities with running different version of uh, smart contracts. And also you can def this, uh, define your policies, who can do what, and then also the certificate, if you have a certificate, if you want to have a TLS uh, SSL between uh, se secure connection between nodes, so we can set it up here. And uh, it will be used by CAs or uh, code uh, crypto gen to create the corresponding uh, certificates and private uh, pair keys for all those uh, parties that all those nodes that we define here. Um, okay, I think this one updated. Okay, so we can call query all call. If you can see that's uh, all the values that we have, we query the data in our uh, blockchain. So we can see this here, the, the information that we put it there. We simply uh, called it uh, the contracts and uh, we get uh, queried, uh, queried by the range. We said that from the car one to car 91, we want to get the values there. So I think that's an issue with my uh, job application because it's not connecting. Uh, so there's a problem with, okay, forbidden thing. So a peer, our peer cannot connect to the network. I don't know why, because uh, maybe I created a network again. So. That's messed up with the whole thing. Uh, but uh, you can easily call your, call your transaction here in your Java code, uh, Go code, or uh, JavaScript. We have, uh, you just need to add Fabric Ledger Gateway with the version that you want, and then uh, you can call it in your system. Uh, I think that's it pretty much. Any question? Any things that I have to clarify, maybe? Okay, I will share it. Uh, I will create a, a workable one. Unfortunately, this one was a little bit, uh, I mean, I, I, sh I shouldn't create another one right there. But, uh, uh, to make it uh, summarized, so you can right now you can use Hyperledger Fabric for writing your smart code, uh, smart contracts, and all you can also use uh, blockchain as a, if you need in your business at some point you need you can you want to create trust between parties and you can create uh, a blockchain between those and it shouldn't be that hard uh, and then uh, you can bring trust and uh, uh, of course it's not perfect it's not like uh, bitcoin this is you cannot uh, it's just for the private purposes and for enterprises so you can if you're in your use case you can you would want to use uh, blockchain as if blockchain is becomes a value added to your system you can create one and connect it to your application if it's written with Java, whatever. You can connect it and you have the blockchain and then uh, your application also uh, that's it. I think so my time is over. Any questions? No.
I hope guys, uh, if you have any uh, any questions, just reach out to me, and uh, we can just we can talk about this because it was a lot to talk about. But if you have any interest in blockchain and hyper ledger fabric, so we can talk about this. If you have any idea to maybe it's possible to write it with. Uh, it's a use case for that in blockchain. We can talk about that and we can implement a very simple example and connect it to your program. And also there's a lot of uh, use case for IoT because you can connect, so you can uh, track the, what's, uh, the events in there. So you can make it, uh, you can put it somewhere that is uh, visible and nobody can change that. Uh, that was it. Thank you guys for listening.